Oh, okay. All righty, you're listening to KQCK Radio Station out here in the beautiful Santan Valley, Queen Creek, Phoenix, and the world. And we have a highly anticipated show here for you with the also famous Sheriff Paul Babu. <laughs> well, thank you. It's good to be here, Joe. And Cheryl Chase, running for supervisor, district number two. Thank you. It's exciting to be here. Did you guys find us okay? Yes, I had a good driver. It was amazing. I, I actually walked outside, and I didn't know they were here, and Cheryl was out there riding an ostrich. <laughs> That's she, the, she does that in her spare time. It's the first time I've ever seen anyone successfully do it. But very, very nice job there, Cheryl. Thank you. Well, she's a former member of the Arizona legislature, so she's got a lot of uh, talents so, and abilities that people don't know. So you've been on an ostrich before. This isn't your first rodeo, right? <laughs> Anyway, how are you, Paul? I am doing great, actually. It's good to be here, not only back on KQCK, but with your dad, who I uh, dubbed the mayor yep. out here. That's right. And uh, it's the first time you've seen the sheriff's town. Yes, I love it. It's fantastic. Yeah. Joe, for those of you who haven't been out here to the studio, this is one. It's a beautiful facility you have here, state-of-the-art equipment. And I've been on your show several times before. Thank you. And uh, that when we drove onto your property, there's an actual small town village, uh, like a western town, and they have a sheriff's office. So I felt right at home right you know, when I drove in. You know, the funny part was we, we built that as a facade, and then I had to have an actual jail. So I'm like, all right, we got to enclose it with a lock on the back. And Saturday night, um, was that you, Dad? You got to refrain from those type of noises. <laughs> <laughs> Saturday night we had um, maybe that's me. Whoa, I don't like that. I have yet to. That's this is the first time I've ever heard something like that. That is uh, very strange. All right, we're gonna try to uh, see what that is and move on from that, but. Uh, Anyway, we had a uh, a modeling shoot out here Saturday night. Really? And they locked me in the jail. Ah. And so it was the first time somebody's ever been locked in there officially. Well, there officially. you go. Well, if you need that experience again, we do have uh, spare rooms in Florence. Um, you know, at I, our 1500 inmate facility. I I did the uh, <laughs> I did the tour of uh, the hospital jail facility. Yes. Have you uh, Have you been through that? Yep, yeah, I've been. Uh, it's a good thing that we have a couple local hospitals. We have five hospitals now built or being built in the last two years here in Pinellas County. Wonderful uh, thing. It shows the progression of our county and the growth. And finally, some of the infrastructure that people have been accustomed to, the, you know, the support, right. the hospitals and uh, the civic inf infrastructure is finally coming. So we have the, the Florence Hospital, of course, Anthem. Which is we a have phenomenal facility. Phenomenal facility. And you've got some great medical personnel. Just up the road here, we have Banner Ironwood. I'm going to have a, a meeting with some of their executives next week. Mm -hmm. And uh, just a wonderful brand new, you know, tens of millions of dollars facility and right with the doctor's offices next to it and then we have one in apache junction and of course over in the city of maricopa so we needed it you know we have four hundred thousand right. people now in pinellas county or yep. very close to it and uh, we're still listed in the top three in terms of growth in the whole country in terms of a county so some of the proje projections we've seen 12 15 as far as 20 years out we're going to be 1.2 million people so if we're going to grow three times the size that we are today in a very short period of time, we've got to do things right. And this is where I, I've put uh, a great deal of focus in the sheriff's office, certainly. Uh, job couldn't be done without the men and women right. who work in our office, close to 700 full-time men and women. Wow. Couldn't, couldn't be prouder of them, the work they do day in and day out. This is not uh, about just one person. Uh, I tell you, that I, I, I'm going to get an opportunity to talk about our jail the right. detention officers, detention aides, all the c civilian staff, the medical support that we have there, as well as uh, in our operation from warrants to dispatch to our records clerk, our HR, our finance, besides the deputies that everybody sees out on patrol that are out there protecting our families, not just enforcing the law, but protecting our families, and they're the heroes who save lives, oftentimes. So I'm going to get a chance to talk about them, and that's what I enjoy most. Gotcha. You know, when, when, when I bought out here in, I think it was 98 or 99, that was my biggest concern 
the medical thing. Right. Because I knew my parents were going to eventually, you know, merge out here and come out here too. And if there's a hospital, you know, the closest one was Banner Baywood, I think. Yeah, it was. It was. That was, and that's and then Gilbert. That's quite a up distance. Power. Right. 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 So it's nice to see all these facilities out here in this place yeah. finally coming together. State and, of the art. We have helipads on both. And, and I don't know if you knew this, Joe. Cheryl Chase here actually was an industrial nurse. And a lot of people don't know that. So she often takes care of a lot of her friends or family. They come knocking on her door. Oh, Miss Cheryl. Can you? <laughs> so she's, she takes care of, of people. And that's one thing uh, a lot of folks see our firefighters, our heroes in the fire department. And, of course, rural metro, we have a famous relationship and friendship partnership with them here in all of our fire departments around Pinell County. Uh, but people look at them as the first responders in terms of medical. And this is one transition we work to do in our, in our patrol deputies as well as our detention officers. They didn't even have first aid CPR training when we first started four years ago. No except, kidding. No, no. Except at the academy. And so all of our staff is trained in first aid CPR and medical response. Uh, we put defibrillators in a lot of our patrol vehicles and countless times we're the first person on scene for it could be two minutes, it could be five minutes, it could be ten minutes. And imagine your family in a head-on collision or a baby drowning or some, some of the horrific calls that our deputies arrive on scene and them not having that training. And you're looking at a deputy My demanding God. that they do something. Imagine how that deputy would feel. Yeah, right. If they did. And, and I've talked We've to deputies. we had that happen, Paul. Yeah. We had a deputy that right after his first his first uh, renewing of his CPR, he saved a baby. Right. And you can tell that story. Yeah, and that's, I called him to say, hey, uh, actually, one of the deputies, uh, Copeland, who's a, a star deputy, very disciplined, was there long before I was the sheriff, and he's a professional. And I called him up uh, to congratulate and just to thank him and to praise him, as I often try to do with exemplary performance right and i said copeland i said this is paul babu calling and he goes yeah right and he starts laughing i said no this is this is paul babu he goes yeah who is this and you know he didn't think it was me and i said i said garnett i said this is uh, the sheriff i said i'm calling you i just wanted uh, this incident with the drowning that occurred uh last night i just wanted to thank you and he goes oh Sir, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like, but it, it's important to, and I learned that early in the military, uh, not just being an, an enlisted soldier, but being a commissioned officer, that you have to uh, and you want to sincerely appreciate and thank those who go above and beyond, and especially in a traumatic situation like that where uh, a family is just so distraught, they don't know what to do, and uh, this hero deputy arrives and another deputy arrives, and what he said back to me, uh, really underscored the importance of training and, and having our professionals uh, prepared and trained in order to do the job. They just don't show up in a timely fashion, and then what do you get? You have to have well-trained and equipped deputies to show up and do the job and what's ex asked or expected of them. And he said, Shara, he, he said, if I didn't have that training, I don't think I could have lived with myself because it took m several more minutes for wow. the fire department to arrive, and if we weren't able late. to render Brain first nice. aid and CPR, that baby wouldn't have lived. And it was like that, that came home to show the importance wow. of quality training. This is just the bare minimum. We've had an enhanced investigative techniques, writing skills, uh, combative techniques, so our deputies can defend themselves and families out there if they're in a fight, uh, high-risk felony stops, all kinds of uh, enhanced investigations, uh, active shooter scenarios where if there's a shooting, years ago, deputies, police officers weren't trained in this. They were just, if there's a shooting That in was school, just in the movies, huh, when Clint Eastwood's got those pop-ups coming up and he's <laughs> tucking and rolling and all that. That well, was just... Not just that, not just the stuff that's in the movies, but this is where years ago... That and you look at Columbine, what happened there, and the oh, lessons yeah, right. learned. This is right. a scar on the not just our our memories in the public, but in law enforcement, because police officers were outside and just held the perimeter, while there were active shooters inside going around shooting people multiple more times, people who could have lived that bled out, and they were waiting because that's how officers were trained in the past, 
and you hold the perimeter until SWAT shows up. No longer. And so our deputies were never trained, and now they get two, three-day scenario training where if Joe Carrero is the deputy that shows up, guess what you're doing? You're running in the direction that everybody's running from, and if you're the lone deputy there, you attack and, and go after the active shooter or shooters. Very dangerous for our deputies, of course, but that's what we're expected to do is to protect and save lives immediately. And so our deputies have that training. I don't, I don't say that to concern or worry people. Right. I don't want them to even think about it. I want them to know and be confident that their deputies are some of the finest trained deputies in our state and have the current techniques and tactical training. Do most people know that, that, that sheriffs and deputies didn't used to do that? I mean, I, I really didn't know that. Some I, don't. Heck, four years ago, we started, there was only 27 of our patrol cars that had actual computers in them. Really? And, you know, we have 205 uh, sworn, and every patrol vehicle has a computer. These computers aren't just like a, an iPad or, or a regular desktop or uh, a laptop. This is a tough book computer that has secure encrypted messaging with a mobile data radio in it, every patrol car. This is a $13,000 item. And it has the dispatch information. It has a call history for, uh, say, if Cheryl called, oh, we've been on a, a, a domestic violence call right. or a medical call there. And the dispatcher doesn't have to read all that information over the radio. These are items necessary time. to do the job. Exactly. And it comes up with a map. So it made our response time more efficient, radio talk time down to a minimum. And it, it helped to improve our response time, which we've been able to cut because of the good work of our deputies and dispatch and all others that have been a part of this success, in half. So we arrive far quicker to emergencies throughout Pinell County, which, by the way, is larger geographically than three small U.S. states, 5,300 square miles plus. Wow. And if you haven't seen or ridden along with the deputies, they know where the other deputies are in their location. The dispatcher knows when the last time they checked in. If they don't hear back from them, they're checking on them. To sit beside the deputies when they're out on duty is just an unbelievable experience because you're watching what they're doing, and they're constantly interacting, and everybody knows where everybody's at because it's not safe out there. They put their lives on the line every single time they get in their vehicle. I have always wanted to do a ride-along. One of these days I'm going to have to do that. Anytime. Where, where are you going tonight? <laughs> I was going to hang around South Phoenix. And, She's calling you on you know. now, Joe. <laughs> Yeah, right, right Tonight's here. probably, yeah. <laughs> well, even just in our community here, Anytime. Santan Valley, we have awesome. close to 85,000 people. We're unincorporated. This is the largest unincorporated area in our state, clearly. Right, right. And we're the cops. You know, you got places like Gold Canyon or Saddlebrook, uh, you know, places all over the county. The majority of our citizens in, in Pinell County, which makes us different, live in unincorporated areas. And our deputies uh, do it fantastic job they're very disciplined they own their beat that they're in and we have 20 some odd beats and so every day every shift there's a deputy in each one of those beats and then there's a supervisor for each one of the four regions on every shift so gotcha they do great work and so any chance i get to praise them publicly i use uh to thank them and to appreciate them one thing i'm glad about is last year when i got i put my shoe on and i had been out the night before walking around and a scorpion get into my shoe and it didn't bite me that night but the next morning i put it on i walked about 50 feet from the house i got nailed three times in the foot Ooh. and it really uh, you know it stung it was a bark scorpion and it it sucked yeah I, it i it kind of hit me because of the amount of poison it put in that's jojo my son by the way what's happening um, jojo How good to you? see you so uh, I, I almost passed out because it really really nailed me it's a neurotoxin. Marie, Marie called 911, and the fire trucks were here, and all the firemen are coming in. And I'm by that time, I'm like, now I'm just feeling like half forgotten about the scorpion going, oh, God, I'm laying here on the couch. with. I fully expected, you know, a dozen sheriffs. <laughs> but, but I think we had about 10 firefighters here for my scorpion bite, and I thought, oh, God. <laughs> I, I had are to you saying how embarrassing? That's what I've said. I, I had to call and apologize to Bill until I got till I got the bill. Yeah, and then I'm like, yeah, hey, there you go. But uh, yeah, they they did a fantastic bill job Grubb making and, sure I didn't yeah. die from the scorpion bite. Chief Grubb and Rural Metro, fantastic, just fantastic job that they do. 
uh, I've had medical calls in my family, so I've seen it personally too, and their professionalism is something to behold, and I, I'm very appreciative, thankful for them. And now with the helicopters from the from the hospital, we've got we've got some great coverage out here. We do in that area. So anybody out there listening, if you want to move to Pinell County or Santan Valley, it's a safe place. Come on in; it's safe. Safe and place we've got to live. All the support. We're ready for you. Beautiful weather. The economy's growing. This is where uh, Cheryl, running for county supervisor, some of the important issues about economic development and about some of the roads. I know that was important. And, and all of you making comments on the chat, we really appreciate that. Doug out there, Deb, Dola, CAC, Dan, RJ, um, we, we appreciate all the comments. If anybody wants to call in and, uh, and, and, and chat for a minute or two, um, you, know, you can call in 480-745-1033, um, or you can just throw your, uh, your, your message there on chat. We've got RJ saying uh, for Cheryl Chase. Here's a question for you. Uh, why do you think the Democrats haven't put up a candidate in District 2? There's a question for you. Well, the Democrats actually could have had a, dem- a candidate in District 2, but it's a uh, heavy Republican, and we know where we're going with that, and didn't, we need to take care of that and go. I'm amazed they, win that. I'm See? amazed they didn't have a Democrat in 2, but the Democrat at the last day, I think she changed over to Republican, if, I, if my memory serves me correctly. <laughs> Um, and then we've got RJ, best wishes um, on your re-election, Paul, Sheriff Paul. Thank you. Your leadership and improvements in the PC, uh, PCSO as a result are amazing. Uh, just just great comments on here, and uh, we appreciate all the, uh, all the support yeah. for sure. It's been uh, four years as sheriff, and the time has flown by, and uh, every promise that I made, we've kept, we've honored. From and the very more. first and from, more, Paul. Yes, uh, from the very first day, uh, ending photo radar, the speed cameras out here. And, that was and, the best thing that's ever happened <laughs> to Pinal County. And we led the effort statewide with uh, camera fraud. I was uh, honored to sign their petition to be the first one at the state house rally, and to be a spokesman, saying that this is the wrong way to use law enforcement as a tool to create revenue for the government. That's not how you do it. Janet Napolitano was the one who created this. Let's find finding a way for $130 million to fill the state coffers at a time that they needed money. You don't use law enforcement to issue tickets, you know, to to anybody coming by. Cheryl could be driving your car and you get the ticket in the mail and they threaten you in the mail to sign under the pain of uh, perjury. And that happened to me. Yeah, I brought my car. I brought my my truck it to get it fixed. Me. I wasn't driving it. Brought my truck. It, it was. I thought it was you. <laughs> I think it was the mayor. It might have been. It might have been. Um, yeah, I brought it to a, a place to have it repaired, and the next thing I know, I'm getting a ticket from Gilbert. Wow. I'm, I'm, and I'm looking at the driver going. That's not me. And, and I'm just thinking somebody's because I got it like 90 days later. I'm yeah. thinking somebody stole my truck one night and went out joyriding, you know. And then I realized that. It was the mechanic's son from the place that I brought it in. Really? Into. So I went down, had a chat with him. I'm like, wow, it's amazing that you're right out here uh, in Queen Creek, but you were down at uh, Gilbert and you know, Guadalupe. What's going on? That's pretty wild. Weird, yeah, strange. But well, well, this is the, the problem with that due process. There's a thing called our Constitution in the United States, and you have a right not only to face your accuser, but due process. And there's a judicial process and court process not only for service— that we don't know if you've ever been served. We have civil process servers going out and serving people uh, that have moved. Their house has been, uh, there's a short sale or a foreclosure, or they got another job, they went somewhere else. That's got to be rampant. It's rampant. And this is where there's been numerous cases where these people have uh, falsely said, oh, I served Joe Carrero, and they never did. And then your license is suspended. And this this, it was just so awful. And and then getting rid of that is... Oh, my right. God. Yeah, taking care of yeah. a license suspension. More importantly, the response times. When you get right. to the emergency, if you call 911, the first thing on your mind is when is that deputy going to show up? 
you know, regardless whether it's you're having a, a domestic violence dispute or there's a man with a gun at the back door, somebody's trying to get in, you're home alone. Uh, if there's a head-on collision, you want a deputy there and you want them there fast. Very and fast. Here in Santan Valley, I, I'm proud to announce the good work of our deputies and, and dispatch who support them. Uh, this past month, it was between three and three and a half Keep minutes. Keep talking, Paul. Sheriff Paul. For the priority one call. That means for the highest emergency, our, on average, our deputies got there within three, three and a half minutes. Now, the benchmark for service for places like Chandler, Mesa, Tempe, Scottsdale is between four and six minutes. And so we have crested some of the benchmarks of quality service and performance in the entire valley. So this is something that's terrific in terms of performance. Our jail, all of our detention officers, uh, detention aides, all of our civilian staff there, we have a 1,500 inmate jail. We have uh, in excess of 600 of those detainees who are illegal immigrants who are here up to a level three which is the highest level of classification some of them are very violent offenders as well as a uh, hundred u.s marshal prisoners and four or five hundred uh regular prisoners from pinnell county that are there that our deputies uh do a good job out in the community protecting our families. Oftentimes, members of the public don't remember and keep in mind our detention officers, who are equally as uh, the heroes, protecting our families, keeping the worst criminals in our community, many of which have been convicted, some of are being adjudicated through the process, uh, behind bars, away from our families. So I want to appreciate and acknowledge all of those who work in our adult detention facility. I want to give a shout out to the Arizona Peace Officers Correction Association, uh, they have 2,000 members just here in Pinell County. They have also endorsed me, strong supporters, uh, because they know that their sheriff has their back and supports them and understands the work that they do day in, day out, and see them as the heroes that they are. It's, it's nice to see that our first call that we got, Rob from Maricopa, has a question about uh, a legal issue. Um, are people allowed to carry guns into bars? It has nothing to do with politics. Is that amazing? I, I'm, I'm so I'm so thrilled to get. That. Thank you, Rob. Yeah, here here in Arizona, you can go into uh, an establishment, say down at Santan Flats, which was one of the favorite uh, restaurants in Pinell County, and if they have, it has to be posted near their license that they 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 request and ban the carrying of firearms there. In Arizona, the law is you can carry concealed. You do not need a permit. You do not need to register your weapons. People come from all parts of the country here and say, you don't need to, like, apply to get a gun. You don't need to apply to carry concealed. And I said, no, Jan Brewer, the legislature passed this. Jan Brewer signed it into law. And you can carry it into just about anywhere concealed except into certain government buildings courthouses, post office, federal buildings, almost always they're marked or posted. So look for that mark or the posting. Usually it's on the door. And, and you can even, even carry into a bank if it's not posted? Uh, banks, no. No? Yeah. yeah. It, uh, no, it, I mean, that's a real question. I've seen, question. I actually had a dispute at a bank because yeah. I saw a guy walk in with a, you know, a 357 on his side, not concealed. Well, actually. But it, and, it was, and it was weird, and the bank said, there is no, no they there really it. isn't. It made me nervous. Yeah. I was like, whoa, you, you know. know, and this is where it doesn't make me nervous. My, wife's, actually, been in three, and, my wife's been in three armed robberies. Really? Because she worked in the bank for, you know, 15, 18 years. My God. In L.A. Oh. Yeah, in L.A. Three armed robberies she's you know, been a part of, you it, know. Normally, uh, That's terrifying. yeah, absolutely. She didn't, even get, carry keep, she didn't even get to keep the money. No, no, I'm, I'm only kidding about that. <laughs> she wasn't a part of the, uh, she no, wasn't the perpetrator. Of course not. Okay. Yeah, and even in a bank, yes, and uh, take that back in correction, that any, any facility, unless it's posted, usually it's the courts, federal buildings, post offices, and if there's an establishment that serves alcohol, there's a posting there as well. That was a big gotcha. controversy. Like, and, and here's the, the flip side of it, and here's why I think as a sheriff and as somebody who is armed all the time, that not only I'm not in fear, I'm there if there's ever a situation, not just as a law enforcement officer, members of our public. You think criminals follow the laws regardless what the laws are? They don't. 
And this is where I, I support the fact that law-abiding citizens, this is our Second Amendment right. This right. is a part of our constitutional right to bear arms. And the government, which has tens of thousands of laws and rules to restrict firearms in some form or manner, this is, this is look, this is our right. And I would rather have law-abiding citizens who feel the comfort in their safety, if they're armed, to carry. Absolutely. Well, just just some information for those of you that want to call and ask, you know, crazy questions about Paul's personal life. I mean, I just don't think it's I don't think it's a relevant thing to even discuss. Do, I mean, do you have anything you want to say about that, Paul? <laughs> well, because it's just not to me. I, it's it doesn't well, interest me much. So a lot of people a lot of people do. Usually, my political opponents, and we've been under fire these past several months, and I can tell you. Uh, what matters and what I hear out in the community. Please uh, do. In, I mean, because, you know, it's people. Uh, and I, I'm going to turn the phones off for just. There we go. People for a minute appreciate or two. Uh, the work that we do. Performance and results. Matters th that are personal that have been exposed publicly to harm me politically have nothing to do with my job as sheriff, have nothing to do with the performance performance and results that we've been able to achieve in the sheriff's office and uh, we don't achieve the number one drug investigation in the country this past year with detective rimmer one of our star detectives in the country this was recognized and is being publicly awarded late this summer by the secretary by by homeland security so here's janet napolitano's operation somebody who's a, a political arch enemy that's saying this sheriff's office, this investigator, because we had the largest drug bust in the history of our state, 2 to $3 billion against the Sinaloa cartel. Wow. That were being recognized in that fashion. We produce results. And so all these uh, political opponents who are out there that are pushing each other aside, trying to get punches in at right, me right. about things that have nothing to do with the job, get over it. You know, this is about performance. This is about results. This is... I have worked hard my entire life, not only in 20 years of service in the military, served a tour in Iraq, put my own personal safety, my own life on the line. I've commanded 700 active duty soldiers and airmen down in Yuma, producing the, the highest results in reduction in illegal immigrants and drug smuggling of the nine sectors along the border. Some of these candidates who are running don't even live in Pinell County. And they, they were running just because they see a political opportunity. Well, I've lived here for 10 years. I welcome everybody to Pinell County, and I'd like these people to stay here. And this is about doing the job, and we've done that exceptionally. That's my turn, Sheriff. And, and, and definitely uh, a shout-out to, uh, to D out there that says, Hi, Paul. Hi, Cheryl. Hi. Uh, and Doug... Uh, Doug says he donated to the fence fund. Not sure how that's going, and appreciate that, Doug. Let me jump into right somewhere. On. I want people to know the the man that I met, and that was the commander of Operation Jumpstart. And without being the commander that Paul was on the border, he wouldn't have been the leader that he's been the last four years. And I've been beside him these past four years, up and down, and things happen all the time. People think that things just blow up once in a while. It's a daily battle. Something is always coming up. And our fine commander, a Major B, as his guys used to call him, his unit yeah. used to call him because they couldn't pronounce his last Well, they could, but they said Major B was an exceptional commander and leader. And I met him, and I knew him through that. I, I was there when he turned over command. And his guys were near tears, I'm telling you. One of them was standing there ready wow. to cry. He says, can't you get him to change his mind? Yeah, and that's a true story. But the commander, Thank now you. the sheriff. I appreciate that. But I, I want to talk it to you about. We've been under attack by the ACLU lately. We've threatened to be sued. We're being sued. The ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Unions, which has done some good things in the past, but they've become part of the problem in America. And I can I can say this as even those of us who, who believe in God. I had one of the supervisors say the prayer at the beginning of the meeting, and I, and I, I thanked uh, Supervisor Smithson, and I said, that was a great prayer, and I appreciate you setting the tone for this meeting. I said, 
you can't say a prayer in, in our public schools thanks to, in large part, the ACLU. And I said, these are the people who advance a left-wing kook agenda in an effort to, under the banner of freedom, under the banner of the Constitution, in the extreme of the extreme minority, using freedom and rights to attack everybody else in our rights and our freedom in, in America. And that's not okay. They're, they're suing uh, and we're just attacked our jail saying that we're serving worms in the food. Are you, are you kidding me? They're suing saying that we don't have for the illegal immigrants who are in our jail, we don't have the proper recreational facilities. Did I get that right? The, they're suing. These are people, these are some of the most violent offenders that even ICE doesn't take at their facility. These are people who've, who've been accused of aggravated assault, extreme uh, for uh, domestic violence, for accused of, of, of rape, some of them accused of murder, okay? Some of these guys in there. And they don't have proper recreational facilities, and they're not even citizens? Wait a minute. First, I want to say we have the best jail in Arizona. I'm not saying that because it's our jail. We've been accredited. I've got proof of it. We're the only jail that is nationally accredited. Wow. With a perfect score of 100, including not just security, programming, health care, but food services. We don't have worms in our food. In fact, we serve, I've been criticized because we serve heart-healthy meals. These are meals that are better than most people that work for a living by themselves, okay? And, and while Sheriff Joe is serving bologna and getting high fives for it, we're serving our healthy meals here to illegal immigrants, and now we're being accused of, of this uh, ridiculous accusation. This is where the ACLU and their leaders continually attack me because we're a lightning rod because we stand up to this administration. We stand up to Janet Napolitano, who says the border is more secure when how is it more secure when we just had the largest drug bust in the history of the state this past year? When we arrested 76 criminals, confiscated 108 of their weapons. These aren't just handguns like I'm carrying here. Scoped rifles as well. I, I get that. AK, I, AK-47s. I, I get the press releases, and I'm always amazed when I see the, the, the trucks and all the guns laid out right. and all the, the drugs. And it's This is here where we live, folks, okay? This is 70 miles north of the border. And, and six of these members were key members of the Sinaloa cartel from Mexico. Not, not here in the United States. Two of these weapons from, were from Fast and Furious, this botched weapons program from the ATF, Eric Holder, who's under all this controversy, and, and they, they, Congress moved against him yesterday, held him in contempt because he's not releasing information about this. Our own government facilitated through straw purchasers, 2,000 high-powered weapons into the hands of the most violent criminals in North America. And now these weapons, we have proof that they're coming back into the United States in the commission of serious felonies. This is unacceptable. These are crimes in themselves that I believe that members of our own government, possibly even Eric Holder himself, should be criminally charged, held accountable for it. Certainly he should be fired. Certainly if he had the honor, he should resign his office. This, this goes, I believe, even larger than Eric Holder, because it's not just the, this scandal of giving weapons. This isn't Watergate, where political secrets were stolen and then people lied about it, which was awful. And the president resigned, Nixon. This is Brian Terry, a hero in our Border Patrol, was murdered in Arizona, in our state, with two of these guns. I'm hearing there was a third gun that, that will be revealed very soon. Then we have... These guns that went into Mexico, hundreds of Mexican citizens have been murdered with guns that our government facilitated, all the while Obama, Holder, Napolitano blaming our Second Amendment rights, saying that these guns came from Mexico. Lo and behold, we find out it was our own government that was facilitating there. This, this, is, this is outrageous. You know what, Deb in Santan Valley has a question for you. Um, how will the president's amnesty of undocumented aliens under 30 years of age affect the operation of the department? Well, here we enforce all the laws. And, th and this is where in America we're a nation based on the rule of law. And let's, let's go back on the video a year ago. Remember President Obama was saying, you know, all these people, let me be clear, 
All these people who are attacking me saying that I have just unilateral authority, just a wave of the, the hand like I'm a monarch, can just make this so. I don't have that authority. This is false. And now look what he just did. This is, uh, this guy, I, I don't know, does he think he's the king? You know, this is a republic. And this is where the outrage is. This is, you know, literally 42 days from, the, from early ballots being mailed for our primary here in Arizona. This not just smells or all the clues are pointing to, this is an election gimmick that is divisive, that is not pulling people together as he claimed that he would. This is, he had t- the first two years of his office, he had a majority in both the House and the Senate. Why didn't he do it then? Why is he doing it just now? He's using it as a wedge issue to divide our country, and it, that's awful. That's not what to do. We enforce the law. So why don't we secure the border first, and then we can talk about these issues, about what we do. Not just unilaterally a wave of the presidential hand, and now he invokes presidential privilege to protect not himself. If the communication and the scandal doesn't involve him with Fast and Furious, he can't just move over presidential privilege to members of his cabinet. This is... It's like, what, are we just making this up as we go along? Where's the transparency that he promised to be the most transparent office of the president? You know, this isn't even political. People have been killed. 14, 1,500 of these weapons are still outstanding. My deputies, this is why some people say, Sheriff, why are you so upset about Fast and Furious? This happened in our state. Weapons are, have been used to commit crimes in our state murdered a hero, a protector in our state, his blood in our state. People in our neighboring country have been murdered by these guns. My citizens here in this county that I'm charged to protect for years to come, because we have no idea where these weapons are, can be threatened, could be facing a barrel of these weapons that our own government put in their hands. This is, this, we, we can't have this. Who would ever imagine such a story as this? And these are assault rifles and... They're, they're handguns or scope rifles or AK-47s. 35 or 32 of them were 50 caliber s- sniper assault rifles. Wow. It's crazy. And our deputies go out day after day right back into the same areas knowing that they may face those. They have no idea when they go out. And when you're, and when you're looking at where a lot of this activity is, um, I pick up feeding for my animals in Stansfield. Yeah. That's part of the area, isn't it, up there? Yeah, yes. Stanfield, all the I mean, western. That's not, that's not even far. South no. of Maricopa, west of Casa Grande. But a lot of our operations, and this is where uh, we, we haven't done this by ourselves, and I want to give uh, full credit to all of our partners, all of the law enforcement agencies, the local police chiefs. I've personally asked, hey, can you give up a full-time detective investigator for our narcotic task force? We have a complement of 21 full-time Uh, agents, investigators, even ICE, right here locally, even Border Patrol. I want to praise those heroes uh, for the job that they do. Any of the criticism that I have is with the administration, the top-level bosses, and it's more policy. I'm I'm not questioning their, their, uh, their loyalty to the country. I disagree with them not only politically but at a policy level. But the, the men and women who work in Border Patrol and ICE, They've been just terrific partners with us, and I, and I thank them. DPS has been a partner. Uh, Maricopa, Casa Grande, Coolidge, Florence, all of these agencies, uh, Apache Junction, uh, Eloy, they've just been fantastic. And uh, together we have worked these, the West Desert operations. We had 21 agencies come together when we arrested these last round of criminals. And uh, the Attorney General's office has been fantastic as well. Very nice, very nice. Cheryl, do you have a comment on that? Yes, we have people out there that, that we don't even know about. These these men and women are out there, and I've been on, heard the radio where some of our sergeants, I'll hear one of the, the women in particular, and I just cringed when I heard her take off on a call out to an eight, and I thought, oh, my God, there she goes. And she doesn't even hesitate. But there's a lot of other people out there that I didn't know about, we don't know about. We don't know what all you and all the other agencies and many people are doing. It's, it's scary. You know, that, that is an interesting question that uh, Doug has out there. Um, 
Why does Arizona not have uh, any kind of operation with people uh, like uh, state guardsmen uh, manning the border? Is that uh, That's not the answer. Or, or do we have something like that going on? We have in the past. There was Operation Jumpstart uh, under President Bush. Uh, President Obama reluctantly two years ago deployed uh, 1,200 National Guard soldiers to the border, split among the four states. We had 522 here in Arizona, which was the overwhelming majority of it. It's far short of what we need. We need 6,000 armed soldiers here on our border. 6,000. 6,000. 3,000 of which here in Arizona and the other three, 1,000 for each of the other three states. This is part of the McCain-Kyle 10-point border security plan. Would you say this is a daily thing? You know, this people Clearly. smuggling da- every not, day. Not, not daily. Every Hourly. Day. Minutely. It's going on all the time. To have these kinds of – we had – last year alone, we had 350-plus high-speed pursuits just by our deputies in the western part of our county. Through Pinal? Yes. Just with our deputies, not including local agencies. And this is where my deputies, my sergeants, lieutenants tell me, Sheriff, every time now they flee from us, every time they're armed. They didn't always flee. They because didn't, weren't because always they armed. feel that they're not going to get chased at a certain the, point. The tactics and, and also because of the enforcement of the cartels. You know, we've had cartel hits here, you know, where – there, we've had people, criminals, that we turn to CIs, criminal informants, and then they're found out and they're killed. Or their own enforcement, if they fail to do their job or to follow the orders. I mean, that's how far the reach of these cartels is into our country. The fact that we can have such a significant bust here, and we haven't dismantled them. We're scratching the surface. Here's, a, here's proof. When the federal government, who says the border's more secure than ever, put up billboard signs 70 miles north of the border that say danger warning travel not recommended drug and human smuggling armed gunmen warning your family my family all american citizens that parts of our own country there's a travel warning because of the drug cartels and human smuggling and armed gunmen don't pick up hitchhikers you've got to be kidding me (laughs) you know and and that's where we screamed about that they took those signs down and put up more politically correct signs and then with a message to call 911 well guess who 911 is it's the sheriff's office so we're asking for more help full support from the federal government to do their job and this is where we got into this whole fight that governor brewer has been leading with sb 1070 uh russell pierce the former state senate president led he authored that legislation championed it which is widely supported by the voters because in the absence of, of doing the job fully that they're required to do constitutionally, the federal government, to protect their country, make America the priority, not all these other countries all around the world. And this is where I've said time and time again, there's 26,800 service members in Korea protecting, guarding, and defending their border. Why don't we have 6,000 soldiers on our border protecting, guarding, and defending America? I've got a question for you. I, do, do you know Mark Victor, the attorney for freedom? Yeah. Does a lot of high-profile so. yeah. cases. I had him on the other day, and he made a statement, and he said, you know, the, the, the drug war and, and the border stuff, because he made a statement that he represents a mm-hmm. lot of the cartel people. And oh, really? Yeah, well, you know, he's, he's I've heard the name. And, I don't know him personally. And, and you know, <laughs> that's what he does. But he said uh, their biggest fear is that the medical marijuana law would actually, you know, if it became legalized, the cartels would pretty much be out of business out here. Hmm. Is that, is there any kind of, uh, I mean, is that an angle at all? Or I, I, I do, don't, you think I that don't would just think so, because it's not just marijuana. We see black tar heroin. Oh, we so see it's all cocaine. different stuff. The largest producer of methamphetamine is in Mexico now. Really? Not just for here, throughout the country. And it's because of the control measures that our legislatures across the country have placed on the ingredients for meth. And so the, Mexico is exporting all these other drugs. It's not just marijuana. And, and the cartels, it's not just about drugs. It's about power. It's about money. It's about people, the people that they, they bring over, innocent people. The human smuggling? Yeah. Yeah, I saw, I saw a movie. I, I, I saw a movie the other night on that, and I, I was actually quite enlightened yeah, in a bad way. It made me oh. sick, very sick, to see that. I've heard about things out there that I've told people I don't want to see the pictures because there's horrible things, and I know you've 
seen and know what goes on, and I don't want to. I'm sorry, but I can't face it. But I hear about it. And I know it's horrible. And by the way, uh, you're listening to KQCK Radio Station. If you're just tuning in, we've got uh, Cheryl Chase running for uh, District Two County Supervisor and Sheriff Paul Babu in studio. Um, and certainly appreciate all the comments. And uh, I will uh, make a printout for if I don't address one of your uh, comments out there. I'll make a printout for uh, Sheriff Paul and uh, Cheryl Chase there, so they can take a look at all your comments. And you got it. Yeah, thank you, everybody who's responding or posting to Facebook. And uh, certainly our website is sheriffpaul.com and uh, Cheryl's. Yes. Yeah, we just I, I just started seeing signs going all up, yeah. all over the place. Chaseforsupervisor.com. That's the number four. Yeah. Also, uh, we're running a ticket for Lando Voiles and myself. Lando is uh, running for county attorney. And it's not enough for our deputies to arrest criminals and to put them behind bars. Because guess what? Half of the job isn't done yet. They have to be prosecuted. When you say running a ticket, I, I, everybody probably knows that but me. What, is, what does that mean? Just running as a team. We're order. campaigning together saying that it's just not about arresting bad guys. People think that, uh, you know, on the surface, that's where it ends. That's just half of it. Because if you don't hold people accountable, say, say a crime is committed against you, Joe. If the county attorney fails to prosecute, nothing happens. That person may have been arrested, so they spent a night in jail. If nothing's done... And they got some good food, right? Right. And they got heart-healthy meals without worms. That's fantastic. <laughs> so here, we need a county attorney who's an actual trained prosecutor who is going to enforce the law, who's going to take people to trial, or at least the threat of trial, and not just turn down all of these cases saying the likelihood of, of uh, prosecution or success or conviction is not there. You've got to be kidding me. These, a lot of these are prima facie, on the face, on the surface. They're excellent cases. All the evidence is there. The case is there. All the criteria to charge and to convict these individuals. And uh, we've had hundreds of cases that where these criminals have received probation without any sentence, without any real penalty. And therefore, victims go without justice. And this just reinforces the message that, hey, you're not going to be held accountable in Pinell County. That's not okay. And that's why we need Lando Voyles to be elected as county attorney. Gotcha. And we should bring him on and, uh, yeah. and talk about that. Interesting, uh, interesting statement there. Um, what about having, the, what about having the, the people that you arrest um, build a fence? You know, you're feeding them good. You're housing them. You know, the whole thing. Why can't they get out there and get working? They well, they pick up trash on the side of the road, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mean, there's got to be some fence builders we, we in there. We did have a work crew before I was sheriff, but we've expanded it to three, four work crews now, uh, even including Is women. Is that e equal opportunity, yeah. the one you talk about? Even yeah. the women. They can, they can build. Absolutely. They can get out there, too. <laughs> and the border, you're talking 70 miles plus from Pinell County. And uh, not only is it not feasible to be able to do that, uh, a lot of the, the inmates, detainees that we have, it, just logistically, that is not possible. And who's going to pay for a building of the fence? And where's it going to get? There's just too many issues. And it's <laughs> we've a asked for this, this. And here's the problem. You can't do this just by Arizona. There's four states that border Mexico. And Mexico's not our enemy here. They're our ally. They're Arizona's number one trading partner. It's important for us to say that. And it's the cartels who are the enemy. It's not even the cartels or the illegals who are the major concern or threat to me. It's the fact that people from foreign countries, countries of interest, that have stated professed harm against the United States, where these people could use as a likely avenue of approach this unsecured border to come into America. That's the, that's the main problem. This is why we've got to secure the border more than anything. All those other reasons are very important to me and to most of the public, but that trumps everything. And, and this is where we can't just look at it as what can just one sheriff do or uh, the 15 or the 3,000 sheriffs across America. It's this is a federal problem that we've got to address it as a nation to protect our country, to defend largely against the national security threat from foreign countries that are countries of interest, which isn't Mexico. So, so. 
in a short summary of what you would do and what you plan on doing upon uh, re-election, if that happens, what is it that you're going to hit hard and, and, and really continue to focus or focus on new? Focus what has brought uh, a claim to the sheriff's office and the men and women who work there is performance. And that, how you set that up, the building blocks is quality training. So continue to focus on quality training, equipment and supplies for all of our men and women in the office, and provide them quality equipment, not just computers and cars, but all of the equipment that is needed. We, we need to really focus on our dispatch communication systems to become compliant with federal law. Uh, we have to work in our jail as well, enhance training there. We just installed a new computer system for the locking mechanisms and security for our facility. And, and to be very aggressive and focus on response times. What the public always sees is the response time. How long does it take to get to an emergency? And we're going to continue to work not only just to maintain them, but to improve, improve them even further. And those are the issues that are most important to the people here. I've always been focused like a laser beam on the performance in the office, what matters most to the families, the people of Pinell County. No one can disagree that our sheriff's office is not far better off in terms of performance, in terms of law enforcement presence, patrol presence, than we were four years ago, clearly. And for those of you that are calling in, so far we've had 71 missed calls that I have not picked up. Sorry. I apologize. <laughs> I apologize for that. Unfortunately, we have, uh, not unfortunately, but CAC Live comes on at 1030. So I, I just want to try to maximize our... Yeah, you bet. Well, you know, it's been great to be on with you, Joe, and Cheryl Chase, who's uh, I, been terrific and... Actually, she's got a long history. In the I, I would, I would love too. to. I would love to briefly hear what what you will bring to the table, upon uh, you know, if you get elected, what you plan on, what you plan on hitting and doing, and and you know, making changes and, and keeping or, or whatever you know, whatever you think. See, I, I am. While a lot of people sit back and laugh and go, Joe doesn't know anything what he's talking about. They're right because I'm not a political guy. I don't care if it's a D or an L or an R, a P or a Q or an M. I, it don't, you, none of it matters to me because I've never followed politics. And I'll tell you, I wouldn't want to be the county supervisor for a million dollars after doing the show <laughs> with Brian Martin for a couple of years. Right. I watched him go through all this crap. and All the slings and arrows. Oh, given. my God. I just wouldn't want to put my family through it, wouldn't want to do it. Paul, I don't know how you go home at night. and I lost all my hair. I see that. I see that, and it—I mean, it fell out from the root, man. You know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a. It, I'm not a versed political guy, and I'll be the first to tell everyone that. So, well, you and Marie, your wife, and your whole family, your dad, the mayor, are just wonderful people. I'm proud to call you my friend. You have a great radio station here, and you're a, a great businessman and leader in our community. And uh, and I want to thank you and others like you who step up. And I know you get slings and arrows as well. Oh, absolutely. And, hey, th this is a part of, we signed up for this, okay? I never knew I did, but, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah I, I, I suppose I did. Yeah, you, you're put in the public realm. And this is something I, you know, it really, uh, when Cheryl thought about running for county supervisor, I encouraged her because I know her track record of, of leadership and performance as a state representative for Pinell County for six years and uh, what she did down at CAC, and I'd love to hear her talk about that. She doesn't like to toot her own horn, but she's, she did uh, some wonderful things to set up regional training for Pinell County for police, fire, and, and medical. I, I, I'd love to, to, to briefly hear about what, like I said, what she'd bring to the table. Well, thank you. Um, Sheriff does it better than I do because I, I just don't say it well. But first and of all— And it's amazing for his first radio appearance— Oh, yes, his first. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm a shy guy. Yeah. Yeah, we all know about that. First of all, you, you may not consider yourself political, but you told me earlier that you care very much about what happens on the local level. And a lot of people don't realize how many decisions and how much it affects our lives right here on the local level. So people do need to care about who's the county supervisor, who the uh, county recorder is, Every office that we have, state representatives, I didn't have any idea what I was going to get into when I went down there. But it's unbelievable the things that came up. And the opportunities that I had were wonderful. And the sheriff's race and the county attorneys 
everything's important because that's affecting you and me every single day. So those are vital to us. As far as my priorities, when I got down to the legislature, I didn't realize what, I kind of thought, well, I'll go take care of some health care issues. And I got down there and realized that there was already experts in there and that they'd already begun a lot of work. And you kind of find some of the needs and you take them on. And there was a lot of things I got involved with that I never thought I would. And one of them was I was, in the end, successful in bringing the, the, the $3 million to complete the law enforcement and fire training academy at CAC. That meant a burn building, the track, and the shooting range. And Paul was there when we dedicated all that. And so was Steve. We were, all three of us were there. It was wonderful. And to go see that building that was all of a sudden up that was just on paper. But that was one of the things that, that I, I was able to bring people together and make that happen in the last, my last year. Um, as far as locally, I want you to know I'm extremely concerned about Hunt Highway. I, I don't know how much time we have, but I want to just toss this out. Right now, every time we have a rain, we all know that if we're stuck on one side or the other, there's that one dip that we can't get past. Well, what if you've got a child over there? What if you need to get to the hospital? There's all kinds of things that we can identify with. That's a problem. First of all, we've got to get the road co fixed and two lanes each way, all the way from Santan Flat all the way to Florence. Because growth isn't going to come in. That would be nice. Oh, well, that's, <laughs> that's, that's a priority. Right. That's a priority for law for enforcement because we don't get any help if, we're, if there's a problem there on the road. We can't get to our jobs. There's just so many things that, that are, are stopping us from growing and being what we can and need to be. It's, uh, it also affects our job development and, and businesses coming in. Who's going to come in? if they realize their business is on the other side of the flood and they, people can't get to it. So why even go there? That is definitely a priority. We've got a lot of things to address. And uh, as far as safety, law and fire, I've been in the inside for f over four years before I was ever in with the sheriff's office, like I say, in the legislature. And then um, seeing the, the issues that come up in the communities. And I've been all over Pinal County. I served a different area. I was the representative for this area, but there weren't very many people here then. But I tend to go all over and take care of what's needed. So I'm not sure what else that I, I've, but I've been involved in, in many things right. and, and already have a success record. Certainly experienced uh, that leadership. Cheryl's been in, in actually in charge every year of our law enforcement memorial and just a, not just to have that support on the Board of Supervisors to back us instead of actively fight us as uh, Pete Rios has done, as David Snyder have done. These are they've made it partisan. They made it because they don't like the sheriff and we don't need that. And not that I, I need just friends in there, but people who have a track record of supporting law enforcement uh, and, and actually have an understanding of the economy and want to lower impact fees yeah, like impact fees yes draw more business here and you know those of you out there that uh, are having a great time listening and making comments and all that appreciate you out there uh, appreciate all the support and those of you that don't like my guests and don't like me and don't like the station nah, keep, I'm keep sorry. listening you know hey <laughs> exactly they're out there too and uh we love you, you all know, it's funny when you know, it's funny when i look up there and it says there are no listeners, but somebody's up there writing it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it always impresses me. Love you too up there, Joe, whoever you are. <laughs> anyway, just well. Just to see that phone light up, the phone bank. Yeah, here, yeah. You can it, see there's exactly. been 50, 100 calls, if not far more than that. And I, I appreciate everybody, who, not just who listened. It's been my, my privilege, my honor to serve our community as, as a sheriff and uh, really be not just – the leader of the sheriff's office but to try to advocate for our county in so many different ways and to try to advance other leaders that i i know have the best interests of our families at heart about our economy we're a fast-moving developing county and we need the right leaders in every office to be elected not just republicans i'm a republican 
But I want people, you've got this candidate, Mary Espinoza from Coolidge, who's running against Pete Rios. This lady has a master's in police administration, okay? And she's worked in uh, the private sector and in public services, uh, taking care of elderly and elder care for years. Very different background. Right. I'm just struck by how dynamic of a leader and how respectful, inclusive she is. And we need people who are going to push in the very same direction for the future of Pinell County. And that's what I want for our county and our families is so we're positioned to grow. We're positioned to bring jobs here, to lower the tax rate, to have a government that works for the people. They get it. They get it that it's not about them, that it's, it's about, about our families. And, and, you know, uh, that says it all right there. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate uh, everything you've done for the county, everything you'd continue to do for the county. Thank you, Jim. And, and coming on and, and talking to everybody and, and Cheryl as well. Um, Thank you. Yes, you know I was scared to death. We'll just tell the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> she does just fine, and she's uh, wonderful. Well, you don't, have to, you, don't have to, you don't have to worry. No one's listening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Anyway, well. Uh, and thank you, Mr. Mayor. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, th thanks again, all of you, for uh, for coming on and uh, checking us out. We've got uh, CAC Live up next. We've got, uh, at 1 o'clock, the Marijuana Report, and we've got Pack West Magazine Radio Show at noon. So stay tuned. Check it out. Sheriff Paul Bevue, Cheryl Chase running for uh, District 2, County Supervisor, and, of course, Sheriff Paul running again for uh, Sheriff of Pinal County. Right on. Thanks again, and Thank I'll go job. ahead and uh, I'm going to send you to some sponsors and uh, get ready for our next show. Thanks, guys. Are you ready to start taking control of your future and maximize your earning potential? Central Arizona College has smaller class sizes and personalized attention to help you compete in today's tough job market. CAC now serves Santan Valley and Queen Creek. The CAC Santan Center